I am a giant fan of Game of Thrones. In fact, I would go so far as to say I am one of the biggest fans of Game of Thrones. I've got every season on Blu-ray, I've watched every season multiple times, I've read every A Song of Ice and Fire book that George R. R. Martin has ever written, including the spin-offs that aren't part of the main series, I've been to Con of Thrones, I've spoken on panels, I've raved about this show to my friends for years, I've shocked people with the Red Wedding. I've been in this shit from the beginning. I'm just saying, if there's a category for true Game of Thrones fan, I'm in that category. That being said, I am not hyped for Season 8 of Game of Thrones, and here's why. Hype is the death of media. How many people are going to make an 8 minute video about a clip that was literally 2 seconds long? How many tweets am I going to see about people freaking out over essentially nothing? Sansa making a very common statement that anyone would say upon a monarch's arrival at their home, if for no more than a courtesy. I know, I'm the jerk here. I should let people be excited. Look, I'm not saying don't be excited. Be excited. But I warn you, hop on the hype train at your own peril. Now. Hype in and of itself isn't a bad thing necessarily. There is a sense of community that forms when people are sharing their hype for something, and it helps spread awareness of whatever the focus of the hype is, brings in new fans, yada yada yada. So in short, if you got something good, the hype can help more people find out about it. But also, the thing about hype is, a lot of the time, and I would say actually more often than not, there is a lot of hype surrounding media that is not very good, and some media that is just downright bad. Take what everyone was hyped about right before the two second clip of Game of Thrones went up. Netflix's Bird Box, or as I like to call it, the happening quiet place Lovecraftian kinda. So if you haven't seen Bird Box, don't. It's one of the most derivative films that I've seen in years. It's full of half-baked ideas and concepts, hollow characters, and just the most ridiculous paradise-perfect ending that you can imagine. You know, maybe they did die at the end, and they're actually just in heaven. That would also be hopelessly cliché, but at least it would make more sense, kind of. The movie is just a bad movie. It's poorly shot most of the time with a lot of weird editing choices as well, and honestly, that HP Lovecraft reference just pissed me off, and it just had a bad script. But the hype, the hype, the hype has been insane, like so many memes, so many tweets of people saying it's a great film because other people are saying that it's great. Eventually, it's not even about the quality of the film itself anymore. It's about everyone seeking validation from everyone else, everyone wanting to join in and be a part of this weird kind of collective consciousness. That, I think, is the key problem with hype. Somewhere in the midst of all the hype, people forget to think as individuals. It all becomes based on consensus, and dissent is not allowed in this kind of environment. This might sound strange to some of you, but people often feel personally attacked when you criticize something they like. I feel like I deal with this a lot. I tend to be very critical of media because I hate when my time is wasted. I hate when something is made just to appease the masses, just for profit. There is no soul in that. There's no real art. So lots of times when people are hyped about something that I can see is clearly trash, I get in trouble with them because I can't keep my mouth shut about why the thing they like is actually mediocre or just plain bad. Another problem with hype is that you can easily get swept away in the excitement. I know because it's happened to me. Yes, excitement can be a good thing, but it's also possible to be overly excited and not have your expectations met. So let me give you an example. In season 4 of Game of Thrones, there was a particular character that people who had read the books had been really hyped to see in the show. In fact, I'm pretty sure this was probably the most hyped book character ever, and that character was Lady Stoneheart. Obviously, Lady Stoneheart never showed up, and a lot of our disappointment was due to 
us telling ourselves and each other that they have to put this in and it's going to be so awesome and all of us just knowing that seeing Catelyn Stark undead would just be the greatest thing ever but also some actors in the show making weird hints like Lena Headey posting that picture of a bunch of stones in the shape of a heart. So when season 4 ended with Arya on the boat and no stone heart in sight, I think that for a lot of us in that moment it diminished the entire season. And honestly, the hype train still managed to get me in season 5 and then again in season 6, I had mostly wisened up by season 7. Though I do absolutely think the last three seasons of Game of Thrones have been objectively worse than the first four, I have to acknowledge the role that my hype for the new seasons played in my overall disappointment with the show. And now we have approached the final season, the grand finale, what we've been waiting for for eight years now. This could be the most speculated about ending of any series maybe ever. And the truth is, this ending will likely never live up to the expectations that were set in the beginning. And I'll tell you why. The book series that Game of Thrones is based on, A Song of Ice and Fire, was written by one of the greatest living writers. George R. R. Martin is a master of storytelling, character development, world building. It has taken him decades to come up with this story. Since he's not really involved with the show anymore, I don't see how this could possibly live up to everyone's hype, which was established by the material in the previous seasons, which was based off of his books. And I'm not even saying that it's going to be bad. I mean, it could be bad, and I certainly would be honest about it if it was bad. But it could also be just okay. But it would feel worse to you if you got on the hype train now. So that's why I'm not hyped for Game of Thrones. If I set my expectations low, it will be easy for me to see the show just as it is. And who knows, maybe it will shock me and be amazing. I guess we will all know in a few months. Thanks for listening.